Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to be posting lots of videos all the time covering different topics in different grades and I'll be expanding my content very soon to cover a lot more grades. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look over a past paper from a February-March 2018 supplementary paper and we're going to be looking at in particular a DNA question. Now this question is um, from section A, as you can see it's a question 1 um, and so it should be fairly straightforward, it should be um, what we would call a remembering question, so there's going to be very little application in terms of a higher order question, however in exams a lot can go wrong in this kind of question, even though it's very simple and that is because of misinterpretation right from the beginning and then you carry that misinterpretation right through the entire question. Now if you'd like to pause the video now and attempt the question please do that and at the very end of the video I will post the memo so that you can compare your answers. Okay so my first suggestion to anybody who is going to be writing a final paper and doing these kinds of questions is you really need to spend some time making sure you know exactly what you're looking at in the image in front of you. And you shouldn't just uh, skim over it too quickly um, because often that's where those mistakes come in. So my suggestion is you need to determine what you're looking at and then what exactly are all those label lines pointing to. And what it does is it allows you to do all the hard thinking right at the beginning, and then when you go back to the questions, it makes sure that you don't make any mistakes. So let's quickly unpack the picture before we go into the questions, and you'll see how nice and streamlined this is. So first things first, let's start off with V. And you will notice that V has boxed out an entire area of the diagram. Now this whole boxed off area has a few components in it and essentially they're looking for the label, they're probably looking for the name of what these three structures are together. So we have this circular structure, we have this pentose structure and then we have this um, shape with the letter C in it. And hopefully everybody will then put two and two together and look at the combination of this particular structure which is a nucleotide. Then let's look over. Now, let's not forget this letter C because it's actually going to be really important to see that detail later on. So let's go on to W. So a lot of people, if they look at this question, they'll look at W and let's say the question says label what W is. And a lot of people will just write nitrogenous base. And that will be marked incorrect. And the reason for that is, yes, it is a nitrogenous base. However, you've overlooked this really important piece of information, which is the fact that it's joined to the letter C. And we know that cytosine always joins to guanine. So is this pointing to a nitrogenous base? Yes, it is. But you have to be specific and tell us which one it is because they've given you enough information. Okay, then looking over to X and Y. Now, X and Y actually make a structure together that we should all be familiar with. And this is the sugar phosphate backbone. Now, this sugar phosphate backbone is often a label that people forget about. Um, it's a structure people often forget about, but essentially what we're looking at here is the two parts. We're looking at the sugar, which is the X, and Y, which is the phosphate. Now, it's important for label X that you don't just say sugar, because that's not good enough. You have to say um, what kind of sugar it is. Now, the only way we can determine what kind of sugar this is, is if we take a big look at the whole diagram and we make sure that we understand what the whole picture is. Now, we have been told that this is a nucleic acid. And the only way to determine what kind of nucleic acid there is is to look at its structure. Now, the fact that there are two strands here, so here is one strand, here is the other strand, can only lead us to the answer that this is DNA. And so, if this is a DNA strand, and it's also quite useful to make that little label known on your question as well so you don't forget it, the sugar that we're going to find at X is going to be deoxyribose, not just ribose. And then last but not least, Z. 
Now, label Z is pointing to this dotted line that is separating the two nitrogenous bases, and it is one of the two bonds that you have to know. This is a hydrogen bond. I'm just going to write it as its elemental name. And the other bond that we need to know that's not in this picture, but is a point of reference, is a peptide bond, which is the bond that sits between two amino acids. So let's have a look at the questions now that we've unpacked the picture. So the very first question says, name the nucleic acid. And we've just done that. We knew it was a DNA molecule. The second question says, name two places in animal cells where this nucleic acid may be found. Now, this is what I mean by a straightforward question. But if you make a mistake from the very beginning, the rest of these questions are going to be incorrect. So you run the risk of losing um, easy marks over something small and trivial. Now, the two places in animal cells where this nucleic acid is found is DNA. And there are two places that we can find it in the nucleus and in mitochondrial DNA. Please don't confuse this with ribosomal RNA, which is not obviously the same thing. 1.4.3 then asks us to identify a number of things. Portion V, nitrogenous base W, molecule Y, and bond Z, which we've already done, so we've saved some time in trying to think that all through and getting it right. Let's go on to 144. What is the natural shape of this molecule? So what they're referring to is the fact that this is a DNA molecule, which means that we need to refer to what is the shape of the DNA molecule. Now, a DNA molecule is a double helix, and you need to write double helix. It is not good enough to write just helix, because then that refers to just one strand being curled in a helix. We need two strands curled. And last but not least, 1.4.5 says, name the process during which this molecule makes a copy of itself. And this is DNA replication. Also, a very common question that is often forgotten about. DNA replication is often a term that we forget, but it's important to keep that in your ammunition because generally a lot of people put their focus on protein synthesis and translation and transcription, and they forget that there's actually DNA replication present. So here is the memo if you want to mark your answers and have a look to see what you got right. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!